Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks everyone for joining this morning. Um, call to order at 9.02. Taylor, can you do the roll call? Yes. Apparently I'm out of practice and did not have it up, so I apologize. See you, Bruce. I'm going to promote you to panelist. Juliet Ballard. Present Dexter, Michigan. Marta Larson. Marie Gress. Present calling from Milan, Michigan. Margaret Reynolds. Present Pittsfield uh, Township. Elizabeth Thompson. Present calling in from Ypsilanti. Jennifer Green. Phyllis Herzig. Present calling from Ann Arbor. Bruce Estrain. Joining from Ann Arbor. Jennifer Heckendorn. Present calling in from Ann Arbor. Brendan McKinney. Present Superior Township. Jasmine Cooper. Allison Foreman. Present calling in from Ypsilanti Township. Annie Somerville. We if do you have could go back to Marta. Marta is here and is unmuted now. Marta Larson. Yes, I'm participating from Northfield Township. Wonderful. Great. Thanks, everyone. Public participation. Any members of the public wish to raise their hand and make public comment? You're welcome to do so now. I see you, Monica. There we go. Should be able to unmute. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm Monica Prince, and I'm the director at the Ipsy Senior Center. And most of you probably know me. Um, I just wanted to say, with in lieu of are getting the millage passed, which was a fabulous feat. Um, I think there's still a lot of work to be done um, so that it's done right. Uh, the first draft of what um, was presented was a little very top heavy. And I'm hoping that um, the COA actually is would be the best group to help organize maybe a committee, a large committee that would um, talk and figure out what the best way to go about forming this the um, the use of this money. Um, because right now it looks like a lot of the money is going for administration. And I think our purpose in getting the village passed was to um, help the seniors in need, to help the organizations that are helping those seniors in need. And um, it really needs to be a joint effort to get this organized and not just have um, you know, a few people in the administration of the county taking it over. It really needs to be grassroots, like the whole millage started as grassroots. Um, so I would recommend strongly that a committee is formed. Um, you know, the COA I think is the best place to organize that. Um, and it, you know, with Andrew at the count, county level, but also it needs to be people, it needs to be uh, older adults in that situation and people that work with older adults um, besides, um, besides Andrew and the administration of the county. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara, I see your hand and you should be able to unmute. Great, thank you so much. Um, I couldn't have said it better myself, Monica. I completely agree with what you're saying and part of the reason why I'm here today and 
also just to make sure I'm staying aware of what's going on in the county. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. I had some conversation, you know, just to add to what you said, um, the folks at United Way have taken note of what was proposed as well as a consortium of funders um, that's building um, Herrick Foundation, Song Foundation, and the Community Foundation. And they are concerned as well and are planning on reaching out. So um, yeah, I, I think we need to focus on it not being a large county department. It was interesting though, when I talked to Jason Machuski last um, Friday, he shared um, from his perspective at the state level, a department is needed. Um, and I said, well, I think at our county level, at most maybe incubating it at OCED and then if needed a department, I'm, I'm not sure that's what's needed, but um, just wanted to share those insights and um, to lend my support to it not being a large county department and that we focus on getting dollars into the community to help the seniors who need our support. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to make public comment? Super. We'll move to the commission response to public participation. And Marta, I see your hand first. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm unable to get my camera to work at this moment, so I'm going to be just not visible, apparently. Um, I, I think that um, I totally respect the point of view of the people that have just spoken, and I would like to add that we have on our agenda today to form a work group to deal with uh, some of the ideas that were just brought forward. But I'd also like to say that as a commission, we have a, a very delicate balancing act um, in terms of figuring out how to manage the funds from the county, um, you know, from the county, in addition to um, working to figure out how to get the most money possible uh, into the hands of the people that are actually on the ground doing the work. Um, however, um, when I spoke at the FC Senior Center a few years ago, uh, the seniors had one request and only one request, and that is get us somebody that we can call and speak to, not a, not a website, not a, a AI, an actual human being that we can call on the telephone and say, okay, here's the problem we're having. Can you point us at some resources? Not to actually do anything in terms of providing services, but to just point people to where they need to go to get services. And I think our challenge is figuring out how to meet that need because I, I hear that from other seniors around the county as well, um, how to meet that need while keeping the administration low. You can't have a live human being phone line without at least two people and probably more than two, maybe three, to allow for vacation time and uh, absence from the office for meetings and those sorts of things. So um, I, I'm not really sure how to manage it, but um, I'm looking forward to figuring out how we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth? Yes, I think um, as discussions progress, from my understanding, uh, there will be a lot of conversation with those um, community funders like the Ann Arbor Community Foundation, United Way, and so on. And I agree that the idea of a smaller group involving many interested parties, including those funders, to keep talking about what the administration of these funds will look like is a great idea. Um, I just like to remind people that when uh, we were spoken to about the uh, county, the uh, ideas, they were very, they were first stage, if, if that's the right way to explain it, as they began to think about um, what things might look like and not necessarily set in stone. I absolutely agree with Marta. That's the one thing I've heard everywhere. And people say that um, printed directories are not as useful as live human beings. And 
having in my work trying to maintain a resource directory. I know how hard it is. Um, and people often don't know exactly what they're looking for. And if you don't know the name of the service, sometimes it's very hard to find it, even if it's in the directory. So I support the idea of having some live human beings on the end of the phone. The other thing, the plus about having some bodies is uh, there are other funding resources um, on federal level that um, and other kinds of grants that we, the county might be able to apply for. And uh, those of you who are in the grant application business, and I know some of the folks on part of the commission have done that, know that, that that's really time consuming and you need some people power to be able to do that. So I think uh, further suggestion uh, further discussion will be important, but I I do think there needs to be an administrative home, however that looks, and be adequately staffed so we can respond to questions and look for future funds and administer appropriately the funds we have. Thank you. Anyone else want to make a response to public comment? Yeah, Bruce. Thank you to both the presenters and, and I wanna just support both the um, previous responses by, by members. Um, I think the question in my mind is um, whether we do, one question is whether we do the kind of, set up the kind of response and resource capability um, in a more decentralized way that is where people know somebody at the much more at the local level, like senior centers or other places that could have those kinds of resources and those kinds of people helping them, as opposed to more a more centralized operation. I think that's always my preference is always for something more um, easily and easily accessible and welcoming, and even a place that they could drop in and, and get some help. So those are the kinds of things I think that a planning group would want to tackle. And then the other thing, the other point um, Elizabeth made about the fundraising, I think, again, this is the opportunity to try to maximize and leverage um, whatever we can, um, given that we're, we've got the millage to um, as an anchor. And I think it would be a time to think big and go after additional resources. So I just wanted to underscore both of those, all those points. Thank you. Allison? Yeah, so I want to echo that, and this is on um, for discussion today. We actually took some time in the work group um, in the subcommittee to discuss this. Andrew is very supportive. The county seems to be supportive of this work group. So we're trying to flesh out what this work group is going to look like. And all these things are really important, whether it's centralized, decentralized, what services to be provided. And I think folks on the uh, COA here, we're very aware of the needs for the agency, what the county wants, and our commissioners really do want to ensure that this is successful. Um, and so we're just here to be that instrument for them and be supportive. And we hope when we get this work group together that it combines voices for everyone um, and that we're getting people on our work group that are experts in the field, uh, funders. So it's really great to hear from Barbara that um, it sounds like Herrick Foundation, Song, and other funders are interested in this work because we might want to tap someone from the uh, giving field or the philanthropy field to join us in this work group as well. But Again, these are things I think we all deeply care about and we want to put as much money back in the community as possible. So please um, be aware that we, we're trying to take all this into consideration and make sure every senior gets the resources they need, whether they live rural or urban and whether they need to talk to someone in person or they need a direct service. That's what we're gonna to try to work out in this work group. So again, I really thank folks for um, their comments on that. And I think the COA is gonna have a good healthy discussion later today. So stay tuned. <clears throat> um, anyone else wanna make public comment? Going once, twice. 
Wonderful. So we'll close out um, response to uh, public participation. Um, approval of the minutes from November 1st, 2024. Do we have a motion? I, I saw so Marky's hand. A second. Marta? Uh, any discussion? Great. Taylor, can we do a roll call vote, please? Sorry, I thought I unmuted. Julia Ballard. Yes. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. Phyllis Herzig. Um, I'll approve, but I wasn't, I didn't attend, so they looked good to me. Bruce Estrain. I'm similar to Phyllis. Uh, I wasn't able to attend, so yes. Abs abstain, if you would like, both of you, or you can vote yes. It's your choice. I'll abstain. Right. Jennifer Heckendorn. Yes, I watched the recording for last week, so I approve. Brenda McKinney? Yes. Jasmine Cooper? Allison Foreman? Yes. Andy Somerville? Motion passes. Fantastic. So we're going to move on to discussion items. Um, the presenter I have for you today, we have for you today, is the Chelsea Senior Center's uh, respite program, uh, Ease the Day, and Katie will be making that presentation. Um, I promoted Katie to panelist. Katie, are you able to share your screen? Do you have that button? Yes, I do. Awesome. Okay. Feel free to do an introduction for yourself and take it away. Okay. Hi, everyone. I know some people that are present here today and are just different auspices, but my name's Katie Garvey. I am a resident of Washtenaw County, <clears throat> and I've been working at the Chelsea Senior Center, um, helping implement and um, launch and execute a respite day program uh, that we started in um, April of 2023 and are ongoing now. Um, I This is a truncated version of the presentation I gave at the Michigan Occupational Therapy Association's conference in Boyne City this year. Um, I'm an occupational therapist by trade, but am really interested in community-based work because I think that's really the wave of the future. And um, <clears throat> I'm particularly interested in respite care. And this program is designated for family caregivers to give them respite. And I'm sure that the Commission on Aging is aware of the, um, the uh, uh, few uh, options that are available for Washtenaw County residents. So I'm with that, I'm gonna pull up my slides and give you a truncated version. And then I'm open, I, I can hang around and answer any questions that people might have. Are you able to see the slides at this point? No. Okay. While she works on sharing, something I didn't mention before, um, I was introduced to Katie by one of the Board of Commissioners um, who saw this as a potential program that could be funded and seated in, in other areas around um, our county. So that's something to keep in mind as she's doing her presentation. Yes, Elizabeth. As we're waiting, just so folks know, this is an issue very much on the mind of the State Commission on Services for the Aging that has asked the 
uh, State Advisory Council on Aging to do a white paper on respite care for family caregivers. That's great. Please push share. Great, we see your screen now, Katie. Ta da. Okay. And we now see your slides. You see okay, yep. terrific. All right. <clears throat> so, Ease the Day, um, I'd like to say, has become a positive social determinant of health. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I was interested in becoming involved in this was because it was an integrated model. So the objectives of the slideshow that I have is to raise the awareness of the positive role that a senior center can play, to understand how Ease the Day model was developed and what aspects of the design have contributed to its success, and then to learn the benefits of each stakeholder. And I have both journal evidence and um, evaluations that we've done by all the stakeholders that um, attest to its benefit. So the Chelsea Senior Center, I don't know how many people are familiar with it, but it is a gem. I really think it's a gold standard of senior centers. Um, it came into being in the 60s. It currently has about 1,300 members and about 250 programs a month. We offer assistance or access to services for the greater community. It's not solely people from Chelsea, but we draw from, I think it's over 50 different communities in the area. We have health and wellness programs, help with, as we call it in the business, IADLs, like tech support, tax preparation, driver programs. And we also have a lot of new learning available. We have the Adult Learners Institute that we host programs for. We have music, we have woodworking, stained glass, lots of creative endeavors as well. <clears throat> we are a real trusted community resource. And because we are, there's this whole sense of belonging and friendship, which was a really good context in which to develop a respite program. And we also are a meeting place for intergenerational activities. Camp Kabika is a program that the Chelsea uh, School District runs during the summer. We participated in that. Um, today, actually, we're doing the generational interviews with sixth graders from the Chelsea School District. Um, and they also have a Lives Well Lived program with the high schoolers. We do a read and seed program with preschoolers. And um, since last year, we have partnered with the Eastern Michigan University Occupational Therapy Program, my alma mater. And we have students that come um, and are offering programs to general membership and also um, for the Ease the Day. Uh, and we have, we're very um, familiar with members of our community and we have a, a good understanding on what people need. They approach us with their needs and we have found lots of creative ways to respond to those needs. So <clears throat> there's some qualitative research that happened in um, Scandinavia. And what they found out was that the focus groups, want, they were trying to develop a preventative health program with a, a home visit model. And these are the takeaways they got from the research that their lived experience, they were confident and enjoying life. They were in good health. And that was important to them, retaining meaningful social relationships. They really wanted to maintain integrity and autonomy and be financially important. And they had a great concern about being more dependent on others for their daily living. So long-term services and supports, respite's really essential. One in five US adults, that's 53 million people, provide care for people who are aging, disabled, and chronically ill. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think Washtenaw County reflects that statistic. And just so that we're all on the same page, I defining respite as planned or emergency care provided to a child or an adult with special needs in order to provide temporary relief to family caregivers. And the average family caregiver provides 24 hours of direct care per week for about four to five years, for about four and a half years. And these, um, this information comes from the report that AARP, they did a caregiver study and that's where um, in, it was published in 2020. So even though it's available, 85% of caregivers do not utilize formal respite services. Why is that? lengthy wait lists. I happen to know from my colleagues at the Silver Club that they have at full census, they have 20 people, they're completely full and they have 20 people on their wait list. Uh, the other problem is it can be cost prohibitive, people's inability to pay out of pocket for the services. And the going rate is anywhere between 22 and probably $35 an hour if you're gonna pay for someone to uh, provide care for your loved one. There is a general lack of awareness of what respite services or benefits there are, and just basically it not being available. So of course, 
the benefits of someone using caregiver respite, it declines in stress levels. And I'd like to say the stress level of both the caregiver and the person participating. Um, there's, uh, it provides uh, uh, hours in their day that they're able to take care of other things um, and not have to worry about their loved one. And also it gives, bolsters their self-confidence and self-efficacy in their ability to care for their loved one effectively. And as you probably are all aware, rural healthcare is in trouble. And this is a quote from a recent article in the Detroit News um, about how uh, there remains a rural and urban divide. And I also think it's interesting what the United States government terms uh, define, how they define rural versus how the everyday person does. And um, if uh, there are the other thing I saw that was interesting that that um, there were 48 rural hospitals that closed and four of the 48 nationwide were located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So healthy aging um, defined by the World Health Organization is a process of developing and maintaining the functional ability that will enable well-being in older age. And those there are some essential components um, that I have listed on the slide here. And I'd like to say that our program, um, the general program at Chelsea Senior Center and our uh, Ease the Day program uh, address those. And the other thing that this addresses, and our Surgeon General wrote a book about this a few years ago and issued a report in April of 2023 about how loneliness and social isolation is a public health crisis. And as you can see, people who report, and I think the statistic, the latest statistic is about 42% of older adults, those aged over 60, report um, being lonely. And this opens up them um, to a whole myriad of health problems. So now ease the day. As a program, there was a focus group at the Chelsea Senior Center that my colleagues um, organized prior to asking for funding. What do caregivers need? And one of the big issues was respite care. So we approached the Exhale program and the um, Wilson Foundation um, underwrote and the community uh, and our community foundation some of the monies. Um, the total, the TPI and N NYAM, the the Exhale program. There's a lot of hands in the pot, but the money came from the Ralph Wilson Foundation, and our grant was awarded from August of uh, 22, and the grant period will end this coming August. We started with a pilot in March of 2023. And we started with two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We've added one more day and we would like to add an additional day, but that requires some um, additional resources. So we have capacity to have 12 friends with us each day. And um, those 12 friends have one or more caregivers that are actually getting respite by them being here. And we have um, throughout the day, we maintain three volunteers and then we have myself and my colleague, Lisa Klinkman, who are part-time coordinators that are on, on, on site. We base our programming on the positive approach to care principles. I'm a certified independent coach and um, trainer with Tipa Snow's organization. So our program is not solely for people living with dementia. We do accept anyone with a chronic illness, um, but as it would turn out that those who are who have dementia as part of their health status, um, their care is particularly challenging. So most of our participants have um, had dementia. So these are the, the principles that we use that, to guide how we set up and run the program. And I train all of the volunteers and also offer the training to um, staff and uh, family caregivers. And that's open to the community. Here are all our partners that have helped us in one way or another. Catholic Social Services and Jewish Family Services and Comfort Keepers were part of our original grant. So we have three tiers to our respite care that we offer. We have our on-site program, and then with Catholic Social Services, we tie into their volunteer um, companionship program. So people can have a companion come into their home um, to offer care. And then the third option is for, uh, we underwrite 36 hours with grant money of skilled care in home um, for people who need that. Because the parameters to be able to participate on the on-site program um, uh, don't allow for some folks to be able to participate because we are 
primarily staffed with volunteers. So in order to enroll in our program, you must be a resident of Western Washtenaw County and uh, 55 years or older and the, the care recipient. And oh, we focused on Western Washtenaw County because it is more rural and folks on the Eastern side of the county supposedly have more options. Although in reality, um, that's that the options are still limited. Um, you're caring for someone with a chronic health condition that needs extra support. It's for community-based family caregivers or friends. Um, we do a screening by phone and then we schedule a visit for them to come and check out the program. We have a lot of paperwork to collect data for Exhale because they're using um, a tool called the Caregiver Intensity Index, which measure, measures their st uh, stress level. There's 25 questions. And it's that's um, organized through a group called Archangels out of Texas. And then we ask people to commit on a month to month basis as far as what days they'll be coming. Um, we offer two days of respite because we wanna be able to uh, uh, service as many people as possible. So of the three days, people can choose two days to come. This is what our daily format looks like. Um, as an occupational therapist, I'm all about structure and routine. And we want to um, have it have variety within a structure. So uh, we also participate in the senior nutrition program that's on site at Chelsea Senior Center on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Wednesday, we end the day at noon um, because we, we wanted to offer that day to new participants since Tuesdays and Thursdays have been full. And um, we are gaining uh, momentum there and hope to expand that to a full day, which is 9.30 to 2 um, in this next coming year. So based on the data that's been collected through the Caregiver Intensity Index, these are the statistics for our caregivers. 19% um, of them are in the red, which means their stress level is problematic. 36% of them are currently in the workforce, either in a part-time or full-time basis. And 16% of them are caring for someone younger than 18, as well as an adult. And 29 of them who, um, because if they do it online, they can click to find other resources after they take the questionnaire. Um, but oftentimes with our folks, uh, we find it easier to have them fill out the paper and then we'll put in the money, uh, put in, the, excuse me, the data. And then they can, um, we can refer them to the website to go and look for more resources. But the top drivers of their stress are listed here. And here's another, uh, this is data that they compiled for us. So 60% of them don't know what to expect in their caregiving journey and close to one in two are feeling stressed or depressed. So I've collected testimonials from all of our stakeholders. And this one I thought spoke particularly beautifully about the program and what it meant to a family caregiver. Um, it's been life changing. And this particular person is no longer participating because of the health status of the care recipient, her mom, but it really made um, her mom, as she said, felt that nothing was more important or wonderful than having her in the program to us as staff and volunteers. That's how she felt. This is a therapy dog that comes and visits our folks. So we call our participants in the program our friends and they are 55 or older. I would say the average person, um, probably average age is in the, in the mid seventies. Um, they, their duration in the program fluctuates based on their health status or living or the residency status. Um, and we have two folks who've been with us since the inception of the program. And we currently have 19 people enrolled, but we have, um, there are 16 additional people who we've serviced, uh, who've, who have come to the program, but are no longer participating for one reason or another. So it's all about being able to adapt and change as things progress or change in their health status and in their family situ living situation. So we really um, scale the activities and adapt and change them to be able for people to be able to use their retained skills and ability. We want them to feel like they belong. We want them to feel safe and that they're being supported and there's reciprocity. Um, we want them to feel needed. And we really establish, we're working on a relationship-based model of care. So we're establishing rapport and trust from um, in between our friends 
they'd really develop friendships in between the friends and the volunteers. And then, um, uh, the staff here as well, and the other community members who are, who are at the center at the time the program's running. So these are testimonials from the po folks who are participating. So, um, we had a, I had a focus group with them and asked them the question, what do you enjoy most? And is there anything that you would like to change? So people's verbal skills vary, but uh, these are verbatim quotes for them about why they really enjoy the program. Um, so our volunteers, we have a phenomenal group of volunteers. Um, I have currently 19 people on the roster that are active and um, volunteering for us. They make a three hour commitment per week. And we, um, a very high percentage of them are retired professionals, nurses. We have a doctor and um, a dental hygienist. Um, and their motivation for being it is they want to give back. I think that this particular um, volunteer put it very well. Um, she really is thankful to partake in, in the day of the people who are of our friends and show them the respect that they deserve. So um, she, she, amongst all of the volunteers, really look forward to coming and get as much out of it as the folks who are there for um, respite. And so does participating in these today help the caregivers respite? And um, they don't feel like they have time or they're not, they don't know what to expect. So the, the end result, and I have it in my summation, is they do. But if we want to build on this model, which has been a huge success thus far and continues to be, I think these are the most important points. Where the location that's there and building on existing relationships, um, making sure that you have reliable funding and that you have experienced leadership um, in charge of implementing the program, starting small and scaling up. We originally had five people two days a week, and now we're up to 12 people three days a week. Um, you need to build a core of volunteers, and we had the um, resource here. Chelsea Senior Center has a huge core of volunteers that we're drawing from, and we're recruiting more as well. My volunteers are actually some of my best recruiters. Um, we want to make sure that the program that's being offered is engaging and offers learning opportunities because new learning continues to happen throughout the lifespan and it's really important for overall health. Um, and we offer in our program additional support and education for care partners um, through my training and we also have um, connect them to other resources in the community. And we have a continual feedback loop. loop. We meet with the caregivers, the family caregivers, uh, quarterly, we meet with our uh, volunteers quarterly to do training and get feedback. And then we're getting feedback from the folks who participate. So as um, as of 3-1-23, uh, 3 and this was as of October, uh, currently we're over 5,000 service hours that we've, uh, that we've provided. We've recruited 24 uh, volunteers overall. Uh, 32 older adults have participated at least twice in our program. And 52 caregivers have been given respite. So we currently offer a, a, the total of 11 and a half hours of respite per week. And 100% of our families agreed that Ease the Day has helped them feel less isolated. So that's it. Wonderful. Um, if you would stop sharing your screen, um, we can take comments, questions. And Brenda, I see your hands first. Yes, um, I think your program sounds like a wonderful program. Um, do you know if we have something like that countywide? Um, I can see why you would limit it to residents on the western part of the county, but it would be great to have something like that countywide. Marie or anyone, do you know if we have anything like that outside of the western part of the county? Like ease the day, which a is why program. Justin Right, right. And that, that's why Justin Machia, Jason Machieski wanted them to do a presentation today. Um, this is uh, the type of program he and others would love to see replicated throughout the county. Yeah, I would love to see that. I, I would love to see a program like that throughout the county. Um, 
something that everyone can participate. Like I said, I can see why you would turn people away because you have limited staff and so on and so forth. Um, if there was a way possibly that we could use some of our tax dollars, the senior dollars, to create a program like this throughout the county so everyone can be served and not turned away uh, because of the location where they live would be great. If I if I can just comment on that, so we we focused uh, for our grant writing purposes, we focused on Western Washtenaw County because we had a lot of rural dwelling seniors who really didn't have many options. But you do have to think about logistics because the transportation and Marie and I spoke briefly about this. The transportation piece is equally as important. People have to be able to get from home to the respite location. So I don't think. I would suggest that uh, you wouldn't want something that's centralized for the entire county in one place. I think if you had locations, multiple locations in various parts of the county that were built on the same model. That's um, what I meant. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what okay. I meant. Something like that. Yes. I like this okay. program, and I would like to see something like that on the eastern part of the county where people can be served here as well. Well, and. and and, you know, Senior Club, uh, the Silver Club, which has a couple of programs within it, um, is open to anyone. I mean, count in our county or outside of our county, but the fact mm -hmm. is that the need is greater. And mm -hmm. one of the reasons this is really cost effective is because our, we have a suggested donation, but the mm -hmm. uh, monies that we got from the grant are what allow mm -hmm. people to participate regardless of their ability to pay. We mm -hmm. have been successful in generating donations for the services provided, but um, we're we're not quite sure. And we're working the numbers now to see how sustainable it it of uh, just based on pay for service fee, which we don't really want because it's cost prohibitive mm -hmm. for many seniors. But just mm -hmm. how much how how much that plays a role in our in our sustainability. Mm -hmm. I like your program. I hope we can see ex see that program expand. Well, thank you very much. I like it too. It's the best job mm -hmm. I've ever had. <laughs> thank you, uh, Elizabeth, and then Phyllis. These programs are so important, and I found very poignant the uh, quote you had from a participant. It gives me something to talk about all day because... I know from my experience with my mother, one of the hardest things for her is she often had nothing new to talk about. And it almost doesn't matter what the new thing is. Having something new to talk about just changes the caregiving dynamic, both for the caregiver and the person who's receiving the care. So and I love what you said about your program. Thanks. Thank you. Well, and I, it's their words, right? And the thing that I love is the program, the problem we have now is that our regular participants, families, when we meet with them are like, can't you do this five days a week? Cause now when they're home, they're so bored. Like now that's the bigger problem is how do I keep them engaged while they're at home? When we have suggestions, but yeah, no, it's great. And People um, are really developing friendships with one another, which we love to see. They, they really take care of one another. Um, and they have something, the other thing that one of our caregivers said at one point was, it's something to call their own. Like this is something separate from my family, which they've become very enmeshed. And that social environment is small and limited, so. Let's Anything thank you. else? Thank you so much um, for describing this program. I, I'm very excited to hear about it. Oh, well, thank you levels. very much. And, and, and especially I, um, enhancing the lives of the caregivers, because um, I know how important it is for caregivers to take care of themselves. Um, I... I'm hoping that as the um, as the potential work group develops ideas of what can be um, funded, 
that this falls into the category of the safety net. Um, the mm -hmm. safety net of what already exists and is successful. And mm -hmm. you've got data already that shows this success. Um, I think this, to me, it's a no brainer. So good luck. Well, thank you very much. And I also want to, in, in the people who are living with dementia, um, I also work for an organization called the National Council of Dementia Minds, which advocates for people living with the dementia. And they, what I found in statistics say, and the evidence in the journal say that the number one um, a, a motivating factor for caregivers to use respite services is that they, the care that their loved one is receiving. Their loved one is engaged and happy, and that lowers their stress level. The carryover from the mm -hmm. program when they go home is enormous. Mm -hmm. So um, taking good care of those people um, means that the caregiver is going to have less stress, and their overall health will improve as well. Great. That's wonderful. Bruce? Um, thank you. Katie, thank you. It was a wonderful presentation and, and it's a great program. Um, I have a, one question with um, around um, financial support. Mm -hmm. uh, other than philanthropy and mm -hmm. some local contribution, um, have you found the state to have dedicated any resources to this, number one? And number two, I know we were all hoping for... Um, most of us at least were hoping for um, the Biden caregiving priority to be carried on. And it looks like that won't be. Um, and so given the fact that the federal government, if, if anything, is likely to begin cutting back on resources, I'm just wondering if you've had any insights as to where else um, besides philanthropy, you might be able to get support. That's an excellent question. And I have reached out to someone, I sit on the Michigan Dementia Coalition and there is a contact there. The I don't know if people are aware that the state government um, uh, passed legislation and it was Alzheimer's Association lobbying so that they now, unfortunately it's under like, um, um, a, a, like abu a, yeah. abuse yeah. prevention. Yes, they have a dementia unit, which the, naming I didn't like very much, but I reach out to them to say, and um, they were given a whole lot of money. And so I reached out and asked, so will there be funds available for this kind of work? Because statistically, we are going to be in a whole lot of hurt as a state. We're one of the oldest ones around. So, but to answer your question, we've, um, other than philanthropy and sort of donations locally, we really haven't found, um, you know, age, age ways is probably on the list, but, um, you know, other than that, I, and I think, unfortunately, the way things are, there are a whole lot of really great organizations all fighting for the same pot of money. So. Thanks. Allison. Uh, great presentation. I'm aware of this. Um, I used to work in that field of it and worked with um, the funders you're talking about. One of the aspects I remember from the Exhale Group and TPI is the work. I thought they were working towards how we might be able to get some of these kind of programs funded under insurance. Has there been any movement for it to be um, seen as an insurance based program where you can get some funding that way? Um, so the whole insurance piece, I'm actually sitting in on something that St. Louis University is sponsoring to talk about the Medicare $2,500 um, tenure pilot that's going to run to find out exactly what that means, because caregiving is one of the areas that they want to try to fund. And I know the American Occupational Therapy Association is also lobbying to try to get those sorts of um, things covered under insurance. We, um, as an organization, um, the, the whole funding question and you, your earlier thing about administrative cost and, you know, net gain in funds, you have to balance those two. 
And there are some long-term care policies that refund, um, but as the long-term care industry has changed because they had very generous policies early on and then realized that um, people were living longer and they couldn't afford to um, cover many things, so. Brenda? Yes. Um, did you survey the community to see if that was a need or did you just bring the program to the community and it's just uh, was something that um, there was a need for? No, there was there was a focus group and I actually came into the program after the grant had been received. So Lisa Klinkman, my colleague, and um, Jennifer Smith, our current executive director, and Bill O'Reilly, our retired executive director, were the three that wrote the grant. And it's for innovative respite. That's their mm -hmm. that was their what they were looking for. And so um, they and the need there was a need, and they recognized it among their membership that there were members who were caregivers, and that role was really causing them a lot of stress and conflict in their life. And um, we continue to people are now it's lovely because we have been seen as a um, as a resource. And just yesterday, I had a, a member come up to me and say, "You know, my husband just was diagnosed with dementia." And can I reach out to you later? And I said, absolutely, no problem. And, but they, they know we're here. So, mm -hmm. um, and there's also a struggle for caregivers who've been taking care of their loved ones. Nobody can do it like they can. And so mm -hmm. that whole trust piece about knowing it's okay that this person is going to be well cared for. And this person, um, it's a, it, some folks have a really hard time making that shift but it's important. The reason why I asked that question is because I was just wondering, um, sitting here thinking, how can, can I get that message out to my community, um, local churches, just to, to ask that question, like, hey, do you think there's a need? And just kind of get a feel of what's going on in the need of my own community. And so that's why I asked that question. And you know one one um, option we've we've done community presentations and mm -hmm. um, and sort of had an educational piece and sometimes that brings people out of the woodwork and they kind of have this light bulb that goes off an aha moment that oh yeah wow you know mm -hmm. this there's some um, there's a whole lot more to this and there's uh, I need to know a lot more and I also um, could use some help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might contact you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Bruce, I see your hand. Um, just a quick question, Katie. Are you familiar with generation um, with caregiving across generations, the national organization that does no. advocacy? It's no. a really wonderful organization. You should you should check into them. Check I mean, them out. Okay, yeah, I found out they, about another one too just the other day. Yes. Yeah. They, okay. They, thanks for the thanks for the tip. Yeah. Any other comments, questions? Great. Thank you so much, Katie, for coming today and sharing about uh, your program. It's Thank been you. wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of you and the work that you do on the commission. And um, please um, consider me a community resource as you start to formulate plans for um, how to use the resources that we've been granted through the millage. Wonderful. Thank you, Katie. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I'm going to remove her as pen. Oh, she, she did it. Great. Um, all right. So the next item on our agenda is um, the resolution for the COA forming a work group or task force um, for the millage funds. Um, along with that discussion about what the work group means, what its objectives are, um, and all of that. And Allison, I'm wondering, since you have uh, the resolution and the notes from the subcommittee, did you want to lead any parts of this conversation or do you want me to, to do it? Um, you can lead it if you want. Um, and if you need myself or Bruce or Phyllis or Margie, we can chime in. Sounds awesome. 
So you all got the resolution um, in your packet this week or for this this meeting this week. Um, we tried to pass this at the end of last meeting after Andrew's uh, presentation, but we didn't have mm -hmm. quorum. So it's back again, um, which is probably for the better so we can have more robust discussion about all of what we all think um, could happen with this objectives and things like that. What I'm going to do first is share my screen for the resolution. Um, and then the subcommittee had sent some discussion items on, on other details. So we'll get to that next. Do we have to move that before we can discuss it or, or not, Marie? Um, you know, we typically do move it. But then, we, you want to look at the resolution before you move mm. it, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so resolution supporting the creation of Washtenaw County Senior Services uh, work group. Um, so we have the typical whereas at the beginning. So July 2020, the Board of Commissioners established this group. The COA was created to advise, whereas the COA advocates to make recommendations on public funds, whereas it's vital to ensure the needs of older adults. And, and those whereases are taken from other resolutions that have been prepared for us by the county. Um, so if we need to circle back and, and look at those a little bit more, we can. Um, what the subcommittee created for us were these now, therefore, let it be resolved. Um, so looking at this first one. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Commission on Aging recommends that the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners create a post-millage work group and take full advantage of the runway time leading up to the 2025 establishment of the millage funding to advise and support the framework for the structure services RFP research that will be required to administer uh, the services supported by the senior services millage. The advisory group will take full advantage of the runway time. Uh, paragraph two. I'm going to have to expand my little thing over here so I can see hands in a minute. Um, it further be resolved that the role of this work group would be to provide the following support based on the Commission on Aging's experience in social service, academic, and aging field. Along with Commission on Aging representation, the work group will ensure that the voice and needs of all seniors across Washtenaw County from rural to urban areas are taken into consideration and that the seniors of all socioeconomic groups receive supportive services that will allow them to age in community. Um, they had another be it further resolved if we had additional comments, um, but I want you to see there is nothing after that, at that point. Okay, I'll move the resolution. I'll support. Great. Now, discussion. Please raise your hand um, if there's comments you want to make. Yes, Marta. Um, first of all, I think if you notice on this that there are numerous typos that need to be corrected before it goes forward, um, assuming it gets passed here. Um, um, I'm wondering why we would ask the county commissioners to create this work group, that, which would take it outside the jurisdiction of the Commission on Aging, and why that would not be a subgroup of the Commission on Aging, a committee of the Commission on Aging, as opposed to a separate group. <clears throat> Subcommittee, did you have any thoughts on that? I think it was to respond to the message um, that the administration of the county was going to make the decisions about how the um, funds would be allocated. And uh, so 
both the Say Yes to Seniors um, Coalition as well as the subgroup of the Commission on Aging felt strongly that there should be representation of professionals in the field, um, seniors who uh, have needs or feelings or issues uh, that, and as well as funders, that there should be a wide um, uh, group of people discussing and making these decisions. Did you want to have a follow-up question? Did you, are you speaking to me? Yeah, sorry. I, I said, Marta, would you like to have a follow-up comment or question? Yeah, um, I'm just not sure that it's necessary for it to be outside the Commission on Aging. I think the Commission on Aging could set up a subcommittee that would focus on this, that would also bring in the same representation that was just referred to. And it's my opinion that it should probably be part of the Commission on Aging as opposed to being a separate group. So would your recommendation, um, or I must go back, one of my thoughts about how um, something, this resolution and recommending a task force could be helpful because it would get the Board of Commissioner buy-in that um, they are going to have commissioners contribute to this, that they're going to have county staff like all working on this and just show um, a lot more cohesion. Um, if it were to not be formally recommended that the Board of Commissioners assign a task force would in order to get to some of those same things, would your recommendation be um, a memo that the Commission on Aging is putting together this task force and respectfully requests the Board of Commissioners to have their involvement? That, that would thoughts? be my recommendation, yes. Um, you know, this, this uh, resolution could easily be amended to say that the Commission on Aging has created and we're asking for the county commissioners to empower them to make decisions. Awesome. Or okay. at least make recommendations to the county commission because of course the county commission has the final say on everything. Yep, yep. All right, great. Um, Brenda, your hand was next. And then yeah, Bruce. Um, um, when Andrew did his presentation, didn't he mention something about they were going to form a committee? Correct me, I thought I heard him say that. No, we brought up this idea at the very end of his presentation, and he was okay. very open to it, but it was okay. our idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wasn't sure if he mentioned it or if we did it. Okay, thank you, Marie. Yeah, great. Bruce? Um. There was some additional details, um, detail in the memo that Allison put together following our meeting that um, I'm not sure if everybody got a chance to see, but it included a recommendation for a, a membership, the makeup of a possible membership. And it was just a draft idea that came from the subcommittee along with some criteria for the kinds of people we'd like to have on, the, on that. Um, has that been shared? Do you know, Marie? Has that been? No, the the notes of that have not been shared. I do have them up on my screen now. Um, and it looks like it's in the agenda, but I made sure to copy and paste it from the email from Allison to me into this, so I'd make sure that I would be able to share it with all of you. Um, so since Bruce brought this up, I'll share it, uh, this information really quick. Uh, and then Elizabeth, your hand was up next. Now, what is this information you're sharing? So the um, subcommittee that drafted that resolution for us, who have been taking the lead on thinking about uh, what this task force or work group could be, um, also have some recommendations around what membership could look like, um, how we want to be intentional with the members of this work group, subcommittee, whatever it may be called, um, how to think about those members timeline, and then tasks. 
Um, so I'll review this really quick. So they were recommending that membership for membership that the group consists of a work group to six to 10 members. Um, and if anyone has been part of a group facilitation before, that's like the sweet spot for actually like having good discussion as well as getting action items taken care of. Um, so they're recommending three COA members, uh, two county commissioners, one or two county staff, um, a AAA, one B liaison, um, an advisor. Um, for membership appointments, they suggest that we consider aging sector experience, being a county resident, knowledgeable about government funding and funders, and I would add knowledgeable about Washtenaw County government structures. Um, the grant and RFP experience as a reviewer, or administrator, oversight, perhaps even just having that knowledge and experience in grant writing, <laughs> um, as well as strategic planning experience. Um, the timeline that they this subcommittee is recommending is that they would like to have a meeting before the end of 2024 and then create a meeting timeline that regularly um, uh, I think it's regularly every other week in the new year for two to three hours at a time and in person would be their recommendation. And then key tasks, um, focus group meetings with the Say Yes to Seniors and Healthy Aging Collaborative, as well as meeting with agencies individually, local municipalities and hospital systems. Um, this wasn't in their membership above, but the county is not interested in having any um, leaders of the nonprofits themselves be on um, this task force. So um, I will not be able to be on the task force because I uh, lead the wave bus and I would be a recipient of these dollars. Um, and so they are pretty clear about that. Board membership is fine because you are not receiving funds from the agency, right? Um, and a number of all of us, a number of the people we're considering, they, they do serve on the nonprofit boards, but that makes them experienced um, without having a conflict of interest. So I just want to put that plug in there. Advocacy, um, another key task is advocacy, looking ahead for what additional needs may be on the horizon, and then outreach for milestones and giving support and credit. This is not an exhaustive list. This is just, you know, this is sort of the direction that they're thinking as we think about starting this task force or work group. Bruce, is there any other comments you wanted me to include um, about these particular items right now? No, that, that's that you did a great job, Maria. Um, the only thing I would say is that what didn't make it, uh, it kind of got hidden between some of the lines, but we were looking on the membership. We were also hoping for ways to get as much community voice in as possible. So mm -hmm. even, even in some of the representation, uh, given your caveat um, of, of uh, nonprofits that might benefit, but that there were possibly some people who had been working at the community level who would be eligible um, and were, you know, we wanted to look closely at that possibility. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I want to put... Thing, one last thing okay, I will say is yeah. I, was in, I was in a meeting yesterday with Chris Lemon and others at the Community Foundation, and in general terms, Chris is very supportive of, of this, this approach. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I saw him earlier this week, too. Um, I want to put a pin in the specific membership uh, conversation because I know that we're going to have a lot of uh, discussion and ideas. I know many of us are very interested in, in helping in um, this capacity. So I, I want to put a pin on that until we've talked through the rest of um, the objectives of the group because I think that in helps inform uh, who, who will... Um, be who who we send as the COA on that. Elizabeth. Um, first of all, thanks to the subcommittee for doing all this work on uh, fleshing out uh, 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 what I think is a very 
good mechanism to get the kind of input I think we all want into the um, way we shape how how we we administer these new dollars. And I think it is a great response to the community uh, uh, input we had at the beginning of the meeting of the need to get representation there. I think having this resolution versus um, having it be a subcommittee of our commission makes some sense from a strategic viewpoint. I'd like to echo Marie's uh, comments is that it is a way of giving ownership by having a more direct connection. Um, sometimes if you have an extra level, in my experience, the, the sense of ownership gets weakened. So I, I would support um, the motion as it's written, obviously, uh, running a spell check through it. But I think it very much sums up all the major trends we've been discussing in the last several months. Marta? Um, uh, just on the typo department under it further resolved, there's a sentence fragment beyond at the beginning of the bullet point that needs to be corrected. Um, this one? Uh, no, where it says based on it, that the base should be a lowercase and that the, the uh, um, oh. right there I should be, yeah, there you go. If it's supposed to be like this. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, so, Elizabeth, are you saying then that you think this should not be a subcommittee of the Commission on Aging, but instead should be a separate committee? Is that what you're saying? I, I'm not clear. But yes, the way it's presented in uh, this uh, resolution. Are there other thoughts and comments about um, this task force being one of the Commission on Aging's subcommittees versus um, a separate entity or task force work group that the Board of Commissioners is leading. Any comments on that? I do. Yeah, go ahead, Margie. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is just sort of reiterating what Elizabeth said. Um, when we were talking about this, you know, these um, uh, Board of Commissioners are focused on uh, pleasing their constituents, and they have a lot at stake. Um, so there is some sense that they want to be, um, um, they want to get some of the kudos. I think, I think <laughs> they will. And, and we don't need that. I mean, great, but really it is, it, it, it is their responsibility to, to make sure this happens. And, um, and that that we use the funds responsibly. Um, so I I'm perfectly willing to let them get the kudos, and I I think they're coming from a different position, and we need to respond to that. And that's I think one of the reasons we elected to have it come from the board of commissioners. Uh, I don't see anything to be gained by um, making it a subcommittee of the commission. I just, I just don't see. I'm trying to figure out why that would be better. I think the strategic piece that I think would be better is if we, the Commission on Aging, just went ahead and made it a subcommittee. Is that we can just go ahead and make it a subcommittee rather than waiting for um, it to go to the board of commissioners who don't have a meeting now until January. Um, and they, um, if, if we're recommending that there be a task force, they could say no. Whereas if we go the route Marta suggested, 
we can make it happen. We just won't necessarily have their buy-in and participation as early as we would like. Did but I capture we... that thought, Marta? Yes, you did. And I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that insight. Yes, but that is exactly what I was thinking, that we could make that happen today as opposed to waiting until they uh, get around to it. But I hear the point about um, credit. Yeah. I guess, to one. I guess I credit. Yeah, just a guess, minute. We're finishing with Margie's um, piece. I guess credit is a better word to use than kudos. But um, but I I think in the long term, I'm I I would place bets on the fact that they would support this. It doesn't mean we can't continue with the small group doing some of this work and we can do some talking with people who have an interest in it, like say yes to seniors people. Um, but I I think having it come from the board is is um gives it a little more strength. That's all. Okay. Um, I have Bruce's hand, then Dina's, Brenda, then Elizabeth. So Bruce, go ahead. Well, why don't I let Dina go first since she hasn't spoken and then I'll follow. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. Thanks, Bruce. Um, I, I think I just wanted to reiterate a few things that have already been said, but I, I do see like the value in this group being this um, committee being part of um, COA for the fact that this is something that could get formulated very quickly um, and there would be very little like obstacles to do that. So I think that there is that value in how um, expedient this this committee and the work of that committee can can um, can get started. I think my one hesitation, which is maybe just something we can find out, is if the COA were to form this committee, you know, is there high confidence that the board of commissioners will accept the recommendations that come from the committee? And I think if we could get some, um, you know, some idea about that, and and I think Annie's not on here today, right? So I'm. Right. I'm so we're not getting a live answer to that, but maybe maybe that would be a question we need to answer before we could decide. Um, and I, I hate to like make things have a, a roadblock because I know there's a time sensitiveness to it, but um, my my concern is just, you know, if the COA forms this committee, is there any guarantee that the Board of Commissioners is going to kind of hold that committee in some high regard or authority. Thank you. Bruce? Um, first of all, I, I think it's it's pretty much unanimous that we all want this to, to succeed and that we are all comfortable with the, the Board of Commissioners, you know, taking part of that credit. Um, I think that that, you know, everybody wants to do the best we can. And I think that message should be conveyed. You know, I think we're all comfortable with that. But my my main point that I wanted to make was this, I think the sentiment of the subcommittee, and I think I'm hearing it a lot today as well, is, you know, maybe we need to be more direct about a shared leadership approach to this. It's not a matter of we want to take it all and run with it, or we want them to take it all and do what they're going to do with it you know, for better or for worse. Um, I think the whole, at least I'm speak, I'll speak for myself, but I think the subcommittee also um, to a large degree felt like, why don't we approach this from a collaborative, um, as collaboratively as possible from the very, very beginning. And from the very, very beginning, I wanna underline because I think the the last point that I'm, I already forgot who, who made it, Margie maybe that, Sometimes stuff gets, oh no, Dina made it. Sometimes stuff gets made very quickly and then we're stuck with it and we wouldn't have had any opportunity for input. So if we can, and I think the, the goodwill that has been built up in dealing with Andrew, we should continue to sort of play on that. So that was my comment. Thank you. 
Brenda? Um, what I wanted to say to you, Maria, is that I have to go to a meeting. That's what I was trying to say. And mm -hmm. is this going to be, are we going to have another discussion about this? Because I hope so. Um, it about depends this on, subcommittee. I mean, we have a motion on the floor in a second. And so it depends on how discussion goes. I can't promise yes or no. That was all I had to say. Okay. Elizabeth and then Marta. Um, I, while the issue about timing is um, certainly important, we know that um, the sooner a group gets together and start working together, um, the faster the county will move to, to the point where funds are actually being spent and real people are receiving the real benefits. But um, even though the next county commission meeting is in January, I, I believe that this can be teed up to be on the agenda. I agree with what Margie said, that there's no reason why people can't get together tossing ideas ahead of time. And then we have the reality is that during December, my experience is not a lot gets done anyway. So you have to be realistic about were this to be um, a subcommittee of WCOA, how much farther would that really get us advanced and in response to Brenda's comment, I think we need to take a vote on this today and determine the um, members who participate, if at all possible today, or at least gauge interest. Thank and that's you. it. Uh, Marta? Um, I like the, the way you're going with the proposed amendment to this um, resolution. I think we could have both of both have it both ways. We could establish this subgroup today um, and ask them to recognize it uh, in their meeting in January. Um, I think that what we're proposing to have this subcommittee do or this uh, work group do is within the um, um, within the within the list of tasks that the county commission gave when they adopted the commission on aging, which is to advise them on things related to aging adults in Washtenaw County. So I think that, um, I, I think that we could have it both ways. We could go ahead and establish this, uh, or at least begin establishing this subcommittee and ask them to recognize it at their meeting in January. Mm, that's um, good. That's good. Excellent. Excellent. And a lot of positive feedback there. Great. Excellent. I agree. Um, any other um, edits to the first paragraph? We'll stick with the first paragraph right now. Well, you would need the motion maker and second to agree to change the language if you were going to do that. I'll make a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, ch make the changes. And I'll right. accept the changes. Great. Recommends that the Washington recognizes and adopts the established post millage work group to take full advantage of the, do we want to, um, it's already going to be 2025. Yeah. Do you want to say this or do we not want to get lost in the weeds with the intent? I don't know. I don't think you should get lo lost in the weeds, but I do think you should refer to it in the same way and all the way through. So you call it the post millage work group and the advisory group mm -hmm. uh, in two different places. So that needs to be cleaned up. I like work group myself. I do too. I do too. I do too.
Okay. So I will, wherever it says advisory group, I'll change to a post millage work group. Is everyone comfortable with that instead of watching me look for all of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And yes. this is a quibble, but technically the, the millage funding has been established because it was voted on approved. Um, maybe you want to say distribution or on um, which part? It says the runway time leading up to the 2025 establishment of the millage funding. Well, the millage funding is established. It was voted. Mm -hmm. so we need another word. I think what we're trying to capture is the structure that will administer the millage or, and I. Millage administration. I like that. Okay. Thank you. The only, um, the only question I have on that, I, I I agree with the sentiment, but if we use the word administration, does that default automatically then to the board of commissioners? I mean, is there another word we could? It uh, might. A, it uh, might. Over, oversight, the develop, you know, design or and design of. I don't know what I'm. It, I know what you're saying. It might. I know exactly what you're thinking. Are you really leading up to the 2025 recipient? Expenditure. We're really, we're really talking about. Expenditure as a technical term, so that doesn't work. Um, Marta had a thought. We're really talking about uh, the runway time leading up to the recip the beginning of the funds flowing into the county coffers. So we have to find should find a way to refer to it in that way. So it's like a 2020, are the funds supposed to start being received in 2025? Is that the No, idea? they're already received, being received in December. Being are, received okay. by localities in December, yes. they'll arrive at the county in January. But the timing, right. the timing of when anything gets distributed or prioritized is something we should also pay attention to because we yep. haven't, you know, I know, I know there's a, desire to help as soon as possible. But I think part of the reason we're suggesting the planning group is so we could be as thoughtful and strategic as possible. Yeah, they um, started collecting December 1st, the loc um, local government. Mm -hmm. Copy Maybe this and I can also undo, but what if we took out the highlighted section? So it yes. read. Yes. Like this. I like it. And a synonym for administration could be management or managing. Actually, they should, get their, they should get their first check December 15th. Yeah, I like that. Um, I would Maybe. propose striking propose. this sentence. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I do too. Is it possible to include something that would say the overall design and implementation of the millage related of, of, of the work related to the millage? Something um, along those lines? So structure and design sound similar to me. Do you want to say them both or would you like to replace structure with design? Um, I like structure. Um, I'm I'm comfortable with either, with either one. So, okay. Um, and then the other word you had was implementation. Mm -hmm. Do you want that to be part of this list? So I'll take out and management and implementation and yeah. like that. It gets us away from that more formal language of the. The commission. Um, um, that will be required to administer the services supported by the older person's millage. That will be required to administer. We remove this. To administer yes. the older person's millage. Right. Right. Okay. Great. 
Um, any other comments on this first paragraph? Super. Uh, the second one then, the role of this work group would be to provide the following support based on the Commission on Aging's experience in the social service, academic, and aging field. Along with the Commission on Aging representation, the work group will ensure that the voice and needs of the seniors across all Washtenaw, all across Washtenaw County from rural to urban areas is taken into consideration and that seniors of all socioeconomic groups receive the supportive services that will allow them to age in community. Um, I think my first comment, um, my first comment was this, the sentence leads with to, oh, but I think that's different now that we took the bullet point away. Okay, I'm just gonna take that off. Can we, uh, can, we not, can we not use the word seniors, but older adults? Yep, yep. That was going to be my next one. Um, my last one that I wanted to add in here. So the Commission on Aging isn't necessarily set up to only have people from social service, academia, and aging field. One of the big things they really wanted was people with lived experience to be on here. And so I would like to add that in. Head mm -hmm. nods. Mm -hmm. Or you okay. could just eliminate the listing and just our experience. Yeah, I like that. Based on, okay. I think the sentence still needs work, but Marta, what are you thinking? I'm proposing to strike the two words, the following. Yeah, I think that that's good. The role of the work group would be to provide support based on the Commission on Aging's experience period. Along with our representation, the work group will ensure the voices and needs of all seniors, of seniors, all across. Didn't we want to say older, Mar Margie wanted to say older adults? Um, I'm going to stick with older persons because that's what the millage is called, if that's okay with people. Yeah. Do you want okay. to say something about in consultation with the professionals doing the work currently? Um, I'm not sure where it would fit, but I I think we need to since since we're not um, stressing that among the Commission on Aging experience. I think the um established professionals need a voice um i see that Bruce. might exclude people that might exclude some people i'm not saying it only but i think if you're if you're mentioning uh, some other subcategories I think in order to to make yeah. this plan um, as effective and efficient as possible, we need the voices of the people who have been doing the work and know where the gaps are. Yeah, but what about being, wouldn't that affect uh, being inclusive? So I like these stakeholder groups that seems very inclusive yet targets because clearly a stakeholder group is all those professionals doing the work. Yeah, but we also have to make sure we're being inclusive too and we don't want to. Well, maybe, maybe it's a question of, you know, the lived experience reference earlier, but it's it's the lived experience of both the older adults who are receiving the service and the lived experience of those who are providing the care and support and services. I mean, that's really where the, the, there's a coming together, a convergence around both what people want and what people who know the field and know the needs are able to provide. So it's lived experience from both ends. 
Mm. I mean, I think the easy way is just to say the lived experience of older adults and those who care for them. If we, if we think of care in the broadest sense, but professional care as well as family care. Comments on, on the bolded section in here? The work group will include representatives from key stakeholder groups with professional and lived experience. Um, I have a comment. Yes, Marta. Instead of saying will include, I think it should say includes because we're getting ready. If we pass this motion, we're going to be establishing this work group today and hopefully we can come up with a list of who's on the work group today. The other yep. thing is the role of this work group would be, I think it, the role of this work group is. Good point. Uh, where's the is? Under the, first further resolved, the first set, the first line of further resolved. Oh, is. Thank you. And we have another seniors in the last sentence. Also, there was one other reference at the very end that I wanted to get people's thoughts on, where it just said to age in to age in Washington County. I'm 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 not able to see the screen right now, but um do we want do we need to talk about they're gonna age one way or the other. Do we we need to put any kind of qualifying or clarifying word or two that would talk about how we would hope they would age? I know it's always difficult to find exact one or two words, but I think we it's a reference to the term uh, that's replaced aging in place, which is staying at home to age in community. I think that might be clear if you get rid of the the, if you're going to use that terminology. Yes, that's, yeah. You know, can, can, can we go back to uh, Commission on Aging's experience? Second line. Yep. Um, you know, one of the things that we discussed uh, previously, I can't remember when, but trying to distinguish um, the the use of the Aging Commission, Commission on Aging, as different from other uh, groups that the county might or might not use. And and the discussion was that this group is different because of the experience and the expertise and the professional, I mean, um, the professional expertise that we hold. And, and um, so I think the Commission on Aging's experience is weak, weak there. I think, um, yeah, maybe expertise or professional expertise. I um, we're we're clearly different than many advisory groups mm -hmm. because of that. I like expertise because expertise comes from many uh, yeah. different ways, professional as well as lived. So I think that's a nice way of putting it that that's fine i think it it's a little stronger that way um so i i just want to acknowledge that this group is somewhat different is it is it experience and expertise right here yeah was that your question bruce yeah, I mean, we've been talking around both of those. Um, and I just didn't know whether it's we want to join them in saying it's both experience and expertise, but. I think so. Have we That's... talked about experience elsewhere here? No. No. <clears throat> I like how um, it's right there. Yeah. Um, 
jumping to a dif different section, I like that it calls out rural urban. I like that it calls out socioeconomic groups. Um, but I'm also wondering if this is too, like this is too long of a sentence and this is too much information. Um, I was just looking Elizabeth, at Elizabeth, I see you saying no. Uh, uh, Phyllis, I'm sorry. No, I was just, I'm sorry. I just had been looking at that myself and thinking the first sentence is very short and then this very long sentence. And, and I was trying to see, okay, where's the verb? So yeah. um, maybe we could. If we want to. Ensure is your verb. From rural to urban and. Maybe read it, ensure the voices and needs of older persons across Washtenaw County are taken into consideration, comma. And then you have your dependence clause from rural, urban areas, all social and all social economic groups. Or in order that, I'm not sure you need to receive supportive services because the work group will not be able to guarantee that they all receive supportive services. But maybe just say, you know, we're taking into consideration the voices of needs of older persons. Then your subclause to allow them to age in community. Oops, let me bolt this. So that flips it. Does that help, Phyllis? If you yes. flip it. Yes, thank you. Does do rural and urban uh need to be capitalized? No. Okay. And I think you need a two after groups socioeconomic groups to allow them to age in community. Um, <clears throat> do you want to include of their choice at the end? No. Okay. I do think you need to add a B in front of it further resolved. Yeah. <laughs> B. We keep missing that. Further resolve, the role of this work group is to provide support based on the Commission on Aging's experience and expertise, along with the Commission on Aging representation, aging's representation. The work group includes representatives from key stakeholder groups with professional and lived experience to ensure the voices and needs of older persons from all across Washtenaw County are taken into consideration from rural to urban areas, and all socioeconomic groups to allow them to age in place. Aging community. That Aging community, I'm sorry, yeah. No. The uh, only, Bruce? The only, um, I, I know that we, we all know what aging and community, you know, is, is a kind of a concept. Um, I'm still a little concerned about, since somebody who doesn't know what, the particulars of aging a community might entail. And I think that's even something we need to talk about at some point at some length, but I think there needs to be a, some reference and I am aware of the fact that this is a long sentence, but that talks about, you know, we can't provide, but we can advocate for opportunities and resources that will allow them to age in community. Cause I, I, I still think that just aging in a community, we're all going to be aging in a community one way or the other. But the I think quality of life, a decent quality of life or something. Maybe yeah, we, we take that out because the point of this is to include all these voices. And then as we include all those voices, that will we'll discuss all those other issues. Well, I know what you're saying, Bruce. Instead of I agree, we are gonna all age in the community, but what kind of quality of life are we gonna age? Well, it also, I think, gets back to our role, what we see our role in our, you know, I mean, if, if we're talking about the work group, um, 
we want to be a voice as well as the voices from the community. We want to be a voice that fights for the resources, the support and the opportunities for everyone. It's, so, so exactly. I think you're right, but I also think that ongoing voice is the Commission on Aging. Like this task force, this work group is to help get things started and set in the right direction, right? Yes. Thoughts? Yeah, I think if we start getting too specific about what we think the outcomes will be too, that sets us up to ignore perhaps some of the voices that we're wanting to include in developing this struct recommendations for development of structure. So maybe keeping it as is, as we've got it right now, I, I suggest gives the information okay. necessary to determine what the work group is going to do and who's gonna be in it. Well, if we take out that whole last reference um, to, to age in the community, um, it, it just, what it reads to me now is that we wanna get their voices, but we're not quite sure for what. Well, I agree, I agree with you, Bruce. You know, considered. we um, need to have something about the quality of life. Maybe it's well, just to age well. To age well in community or something very simple if you don't want to get into uh and, and like i said it's not easy to pick a, an a, a exact word or two but i think we need to be more um clear about why we want to have all this input well we have used the term healthy and fulfilling aging before mm -hmm. in a lot of our <clears throat> I I mean, to, to lead healthy and fulfilling lives as they age. Maybe just say for healthy and fulfilling lives. And forget about the priorities, but just socioeconomic group, comma, for healthy and fulfilling lives. Does that work, Bruce? It's getting closer. Um um so oh, i but want don't we to want try... that for all seniors don't we want that for all seniors not just socioeconomic groups i mean right which is where i think i think we do need a different sentence for the rest of what we're talking about this sentence is saying already that we're including representatives from key stakeholder groups so their voices are taken into consideration Period. um yeah. yeah and then um, I think it would be good to tie th this back to the the purpose of the work group, which is to help do this stuff with the older person's millage, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, I agree. I think breaking out another sentence of why why this what this is all about would be good. Marta, your box is lit up. Do you have an idea? No, I, I didn't have anything to add at this point. Okay. Actually, I, I think um, maybe those last two sentence fragments are not really necessary from my point of view. I think they're implied in what we've already got. They're starting with these voices. 
I know yes. other people may feel differently, but I think what's in the, what's this is the implied structure of this subcommittee, I think, or the implied okay. task. Yeah, I guess we would just be reiterating what's in the first paragraph. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we need to mm -hmm. because this is targeted. I think you, under now, therefore, it be resolved. You have plurals for recognize and adopt, which you don't need. You don't only need to be recognized and adopt. You don't need to recognize this and adopts. Um, the board commissioners recognize and, and adopt. adopt. Yep, the established. Support the framework. I don't need to. I, I don't want to call the question, but we are getting on. And I'm wondering if this is good enough. I think it's good enough. I think it's good it. enough. Agreed. Um, do we need to have a friendly amendment from Brenda and Elizabeth now that this is final? So friendly well, I'll, I'll move with a friendly amendment. Yep. Great. Roll call vote, please, Taylor. I meet myself first this time. Um, Juliet Ballard had to leave early. Um, Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yeah. Margaret Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Uh, Jennifer Green. Yes. No, oh, I'm here. Yeah. I forgot I admitted you. <laughs> <laughs> Alice Herzig. Yes. Bruce Estrain. Yes. Jennifer Hackendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes. Jasmine Cooper is absent. Allison Foreman. Yes. Annie Somerville is absent. Motion passes. Hey. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like that, Allison. Okay, so um Next is membership. And I, I know we're short on time. Um, I have a little extra time this morning. Um, and so I'm happy to continue the conversation, but we should all be, if we continue beyond 11, we should try to wrap it up as quickly as possible. Um, so for membership of this group, the uh, subcommittee had recommended three COA members, two county commissioners, a county staff member or two. Um, I apologize. I think I edited this, edited what you had. You had county staffer slash OCED question mark. Um, and so I do want to note what you all are seeing right now is my uh, suggested edit to that. Um, a triple A one B ageways liaison, um, and I had a question about that for you in a moment. Subcommittee, um, one advisor, uh, perhaps from philanthropy, and then asking about the formality and formality of of the group, which we can, I'll touch on right now. As a subcommittee, you don't have to have your meetings recorded um, unless you hit quorum. You don't have to go through a lot of the extra stuff that that we have to do when we have the full meeting. And so I would say in that regard, it's a little bit more um, informal as far as um, <clears throat> county structured applied to, to the group. Um, I had a question <clears throat> on the AAA one B liaison. Um, <clears throat> what what were you envisioning their role and like contribution to the task force to be? So <clears throat> they have a lot of knowledge of the resources in the community, or because we were talking about there might be research and strategy, and mm -hmm. AA one B or Ageways would have knowledge of that. So that was just the thinking. And who knows, someone may mysteriously say, why not have Ageways manage this? Because I've seen some millages be managed by AAAs. So that's my concern about having them. Exactly. I mean, I, it's a double-edged sword there. The feedback she'd gotten is that concern about potential conflict of interest. And yeah. you're right, because... I know three counties where the Area Agency on Aging administers millage, yeah. or does it dually with the county finance department? 
Yep. Um, I would also recommend not having AAA one B um because they have uh some services that I I know that they apply to other millage funds for. So they would be a nonprofit applying for some of this funding and that would that would be the conflict <laughs> of interest. So I would I would recommend taking them off the list. Uh Marta, then Bruce, and then Taylor. Um, I, I'm just saying that I think that, Marie, you've been talking to people on the Commission on Aging already about interest and in possibly serving on this work group. Is it possible that you could just then nominate people or do, how, how are you proposing to go about this? Sure. Um, I mean, so, I, think it, I think before I, before I stop, I think it's obvious yep. that Andrew DeLue would be the county staff member. There mm -hmm. is no Department on Aging director, but whoever's in charge of OCED, I think sounds like a reasonable addition. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if they decide to incubate it in OCED, I'm sure that Tony or um, she would want to send a representative as the other person. So I'm yeah. not terribly concerned about uh, who those people would be. I know that they would be um, good ones. Um, yeah. So Marta brought up that I, I have been talking to a few people and I've been trying to think strategically about who we could send and why. So I'll share, um, what, who I've been talking to and, and sort of my rationale behind who I'm thinking of, um, nominating. So one would be Marta. Marta has a lot of experience with this type of work. Marta represents a, a rural area um, and like one of the corners of the counties. The corners of the counties are as as um, difficult. It's most difficult for them to get the services that they need. Um, Marta has uh, board experience with nonprofits who are providing senior services from food pantry to transportation, um, et cetera. Uh, she does a lot of evaluation work. Um, I'm not going to go over her entire bio, but um, a lot of education and all the way up to NASA, guys. She's worked with NASA, which I'm a space nerd, and I think that's super cool. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to put that one in there, um, but very experienced. Um, I also uh, would recommend Elizabeth Thompson. Um, she serves on one of the state aging committees. She has lots of experience doing this type of thing. Person, I mean, both Marta and Elizabeth have um, lived experience as aging people, um, as well as um, going through disabilities and caregiver things and um, some other things that just, I'm super qualified people. For a third, um, I would recommend either Allison Foreman or Juliet Ballard. Allison, because uh, she used to work in Washtenaw County's aging sector, she is very familiar with um, all of all of the um, most vulnerable in our community. She ran Ypsilanti Meals on Wheels, and they provide all sorts of wraparound services in addition to Allison's um participation uh, in existing aging uh, networks. Um, so she's very familiar with the, the collaborative nature and um, services provided, the needs that agencies have to, to get services. But she's not currently a provider in Washtenaw County at this time, so there's no conflict of interest. And then uh, Juliet Ballard was my other one. She would be a, a represent a representative of the out county area. Um, she um, does professional caregiving. Not she would not be able to apply for these funds, but she sees day to day uh, what people are going through. She's worked in um, various county and governmental roles. Um, and I don't remember her position when she was at the LA County, um, but she was running some of that work. And so she's just really familiar with how some of this goes. 
Um, and I've talked with all four of them. They are interested. The other thing I would like to say, because I know a lot of us really would love to be a part of this task force, um, is that the Commission on Aging is still an advisory body. Even though I can't be on the task force, I am going to be super involved in getting people whatever information that they need or helping talk to the commissioners that I've built relationships with um, and whatever it takes. So just because someone is not on this task force does not mean we want you to sit idly by. We we need you to just keep helping us in, in the background too. Um, so those those would be my my nominations and the people that I've I've already talked to about potential interest. Um, Bruce. Um, well, I think those are all good people. I'm I'm I am also quite interested and feel like if we wanted to get into um, talking experience or resume, um, I could do that. But um, you know, I think I have. A, a, quite a bit to contribute. Um, the question is, I think, partly, you know, like you said, a lot of people are interested. So how do we best decide? Um, I, I don't know. You know, I, I kind of feel like it's um, we've already got any number of really qualified people. So how do we go about it is the question. I mean, I mean, would I, we all like to do a vote? Do you want to have more discussion? Anyone else want? So Bruce self-nominated, which is great. Um, anyone else, I guess, if we're going through a nomination process, want to self-nominate or nominate I mean, someone else? Bruce, I see you have one thing. more. One other quick thing. I mean, the subcommittee did lay out some criteria that they thought were important for, for, for people. And I think those are relevant. And I think in some ways you know, uh, it would be helpful. I, you know, people don't know a whole lot about my background, but I, you know, I think it, how do we best present ourselves if we are serious candidates, you know, whether to take, take, it, take time to, you know, write down why we think we're qualified for the job, share that information. Because right now I think we're working with limited understanding of what people could bring to the table. Elizabeth? Um, one thing I would like to add for people to think of, whether they're self-nominating or uh, have been previously recommended, is it's a pretty intense time frame uh, from the way this committee has been described involving uh, <coughs> and I'm sure discussions outside of meetings, so that might be something everybody wants to consider is um, whether that fits in uh, an intense burst of activity for the next several months. Uh, Taylor, I see your hand up. Yep, I just had a comment on um, if Ageways uh, is not going to be a member, maybe consider adding an additional co-A member as well as please definitely include us in any type of thing. We'll definitely want to be helpful in any way we can, even though we are not members. Right. Um, the other thing I didn't say before is that the additional advisors that I know have already been talking with Andrew <coughs> and are very interested in being a part of this, one would be Chris Lemon. The Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation gives out $10 million every year, which is, you know, I mean, just essentially what this um, millage is going to be doling out Um and uh, they've been doing over this year, they did over a million dollars to the aging sector. Um, they have a lot of knowledge on how RFP works, um, the best ways to go about selecting who gets funds and how much and and that whole process. Um, and so, I mean, everyone loves Chris. I'm sure everyone loves Chris, uh, but he he will be a part of this. And so I want his name to be recognized on, on that. 
And then the other one is Gary Munz. So because <laughs> nonprofits are not able to serve on this due to conflict of interest, um, Gary Munz has run the Say Yes to Senior groups. He has been very connected and involved in a lot of agencies um, and a lot of work. And he's very interested in helping be that liaison uh, um, between agencies and the task force and, and making sure that all of that is heard. I'll also say that that as um, a Linden Township resident, he he also brings the lens of how um, rural services really need to be uh, supported with these funds. And um, so I do want to just throw their names up on the board. I think Gary's a good one, too, because to the point that uh, Elizabeth made is that this is going to have a burst of activity. And I've always found Gary to be on board to help and really mm -hmm. like he's he's willing to you know put in the work like so I definitely feel like he would be a very good asset to this group uh work group yeah um I talked with um, someone from the Herrick Foundation who does a lot of funding of older adult services, and she's really well connected to the Song Foundation, and they are happy to be supportive in whatever ways they can. They they don't want to be on this task force. They think Chris is the right person from a philanthropy perspective, um, and so I do want to just acknowledge that there are additional funders, and and they're in support of Chris being that that rep. Awesome, um, hey, Chris, Bruce. Um. Chris has said publicly that he would in some ways prefer to keep arm's length from this. So I think we need to double check on that. I mean, like you said, Chris would be a great addition, but I think he has some strategic reasons for wanting to keep arm's length from being actually on the, any kind of a work group, but be very supportive of the work group. So that, that's, that's just from a couple of recent conversations in, in public that he's um, expressed that. Marta, then Margie, then Phyllis. Um, I would suggest that if there are no other members of the COA that want to put themselves forward, and we'll have to check on that, but um, I would suggest that we just take all five of the people that have either volunteered or been volunteered, and I think it's a representative group of the Commission on Aging. I didn't hear Allison put her name forward, but if she did, then there's more than five. Um, yeah, I put Allison and Juliet forward. Um, okay, I just missed that. Potentials. Sorry. Yeah, is that's that, all right. Is, is that everybody that you listed? Yep, I mentioned the four, and then uh, Bruce put his name in, so that is five. Okay. Yep. Because I think if we go beyond five, it's too many. But um, yeah. we need to check to make sure no one else wants to put their name in. <clears throat> Margie, then Phyllis. Um, I wonder um, if we can, I'm in um, sort of trying to keep it at a reasonable number. I'm wondering if we can um, have one person, a uh, county staff member, um, <clears throat> I, I don't know whether that's um, agreeable to the county, um, but um, that I'm I'm really looking to. I think the Commission on Aging has the most expertise, um, so just kind of wondering about that. Also, um, I I feel like um, someone from Chart would be sort of a, a a bonus because they um they know them um yeah, chart was discussed because they run the Healthy Aging Collaborative and so having a representative from a group that's con actively convening the nonprofits doing this work and who's diving deeper into some of the issues like they have with transportation and housing, um, I feel like is really beneficial. But they are a nonprofit and they do in the coming years have some work that they would apply and could apply to these funds for. Um, and so for conflict of interest, it's best that they 
excuse me, not serve on the task force itself, um, but they would be another group, another stakeholder group to actively tap and hold focus groups with and, and things like that. Um, did we have um, the um, Dina's group up there before? Dina's group chart, or I'm sorry, Healthy Aging Collaborative? Yeah. Um, is here as an advisor in the, okay. the advisor group. Okay. Um, and Margie, we but, talked about them as one of the focus groups we definitely wanted yeah. to meet with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That that's all I have. I I I am looking to put more um COA people on the group, but mm -hmm. maybe that's not possible. Yeah. Uh Phyllis, Elizabeth, and Bruce. Um, so first, I like the idea of um, the five that you have listed from the COA. Um, and I'm thinking that uh, Chris Lemon and the Ageways are appropriate for either individual consultations or focus groups. Um, it, I mean, it, it's worth having another conversation with Chris Lemon, but I, I thought I had heard <clears throat> previously that he felt it would be a conflict of interest uh, since they fund so many of the uh, senior services. Uh, already. Yeah, I talked with Chris earlier this week. Um, I'm more than happy to touch base with him again, but... He and the county see their collaboration and communication being an asset because the community foundation does have so much knowledge about the work that's being done. And in the future, when the county selects what priorities they are going to go for, the foundation can be like, OK, now we know that you're funding that and we're going to focus on these other things. And so the, the aging sector as a whole gets a lot more impact because of a strategic alignment. Um, I know that Chris said that he wouldn't be able to do, like, he wouldn't necessarily be at all of the task force meetings, right? He's, he's a very busy person, and this is a big-time commitment that we have laid out, but he is going, like, he's already started these conversations um, with the county, and so having him a part of this is is good. Elizabeth, Bruce, then Jennifer. Um. I think it's important to uh, allow the county to have a second staff member if they wish, because they are the the entity that will be administering. There's a lot of uh, interior knowledge and also um, in terms of keeping records of the task force discussions and recommendations, I think the county staff member would be immensely helpful. So I would support having two. You're done? Bruce? Yes. Um, the only question I have about uh, um, the county staff membership is, I think, I agree with Elizabeth's point, but I think it's a little bit, it could be a little bit complicated to have a, a name of someone or an, or, or a, an entity that is actually a department within um, like OECD. I mean, I think there's people who feel have strong feelings about whether some organization like that should be part of the aging um, con you know, uh, plan planning group going forward. I've um, just yesterday at a meeting, it was at, happened to be at the uh, community foundation, but there was representatives from five different uh, aging groups and unanimously everybody thought that you know it's any anything shouldn't be underneath any kind of a other organization there was talk about um you know OECD being a place to locate this and I think people felt very strongly that that wasn't a good idea so I would think twice about I think Andrew would be a great addition and then if there was somebody else who didn't represent formally another department. I don't know who that might be. 
Um, so I tentatively have Ashley Hall's name down. She is the county staffer who will come to these meetings sometimes. So she's very aware of the work that we're doing. She knows we're putting together this task force. I can ask her if she has interest and capacity to being a second person or if she would recommend someone else in particular. Uh, Jennifer? Uh, yes, I wanted to be a part of this work group, but as a county resident, I just wanted to make sure that uh, this group uh, is a reflection of all the county um, older persons that live here. Thank you. Marta? Marta, you're muted. Sorry, we have to think about quorum. So, um, yeah, and we can't have all these people. I think um, I agree with Jennifer that we need to make sure that this group is representative of the entire county. So, you know, I am willing to back away um, if uh, it seems, you know, in favor of Jennifer, if that is the situation we have. I do want to remind that quorum seven now that we grew. Oh, quorum is seven. Oh, okay. Correct. I apologize. Okay. So we're good then. Then I, I don't need to do that. I also would suggest that we, once we settle on who from the commission on aging is going to be on the team, that we empower uh, Marie as the chair to fill in the rest of the spots. Um, you know, certainly with the county commissioners, we can't nominate them without their permission. And I think probably the chair of the county commission should be the one who, you know, figures that out. And in addition, the county staff members, we can't put them on without their agreement. So we can't make those decisions today, but we can decide on who from this group uh, would be involved in the team. Elizabeth? Um, I was going to say something similar, so. Great. Um, I don't remember if we have to formally vote on establishing a subcommittee, but I think it would be a good idea seeing as we have the other resolution going to the Board of Commissioners. So could I have a motion? Phyllis, a second? Jennifer? Oh, Jennifer, it's one of your last votes. <clears throat> um, all right, then Taylor, do a roll call, please. Okay. Uh, so for the work group committee members, Julia Ballard. Marta Larson. Marta, you're muted. Yes. Marie Gress? Yes. Margaret Reynolds? Hey, I stepped away for a minute. We're voting on which piece of this? Establishing this work group and the membership of that work group. Okay. Uh, um, yes. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Jennifer Green? Yes. Phyllis Herzig? Yes. Bruce Strain? Yes. Jennifer Hackendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. She had to leave. Jasmine Cooper is absent. Allison Foreman. Yes. Annie Somerville is absent. And we have a quorum. Motion passes. Wonderful. For the sake of time, we're going to skip the subcommittee updates. Um, we don't have Annie here for the Board of Commissioners. Um, my only report is that this is the last meeting that a few of us are going to be at. Jennifer Heckendorn, Margie Reynolds, and Jasmine Cooper, who is not here today, um, are, are going off the Commission on Aging, and I just wanted to recognize that we appreciate you and all the work that you have done, all the meetings that you've attended, and for sitting longer at this one, um, your last one. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. 
Mm -hmm. um, I did get connected with one of the new members and um, looking forward to having them join us in January. Marta? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the list that the county commissioners passed, and I'm unable to figure out um, who replaces Jennifer Heckendorn, and why is, if Margie Reynolds is stepping off, why is she still on this list? I'm con very confused. Margie, are you staying on? Um, well, I submitted it. Um... Oh! I, I had heard that you were rolling off. I didn't look at the Board of Commissioners list. I was not as good as Marta. I thought you were rolling off. Yeah. I apologize. So who's replacing Jennifer Heckendorn then? Um, her name is, or their name is Matt Madden. Um, I don't know for sure that this person is replacing Jennifer or if they're replacing Jasmine. Um, I did not get the district information. I just got the email last night or early this morning. Um, so I haven't connected with them yet. I can oh, answer. Oh yeah, Wait. go for it, Taylor. Uh, Jennifer is not being replaced as of yet. No one's applied. Um, Madden is a replace is a public at large. They'll replace Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Great. So what district does Jennifer Heckendorn re represent? Nine. Oh, that's, they just completely left the district off the list. Jennifer, what would, anything you'd like to add? Uh, well, I did have a colleague who was supposed to be um, applying, so I'll check back in with her to see um, if she is still going to do that. Um, and I also sent out to uh, several of my network to in, in my district. So hopefully uh, someone will be applying soon. Great. You'll be missed. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. So am I Am I a part of it? For yes. Next? Yes, you are. You stay with yes, us. Yes, you were on there too that Ashley had sent us. Okay. Sent I apologize. I was wrong. Maybe it's wishful um, thinking. Never. Ah. I was very sad when I heard you were thinking about coming off of it. Um, we need you. So Thank I'm you. glad you're staying. Um, I also misspoke about something else I said in January, but we actually don't have a January meeting because it comes right after the New Year's. Um, our next meeting is going to be February 3rd, um, where uh. we meet any new members, um, set the calendar and all those things. If it's a Friday, it's a seventh. My goodness. Is there um, the seventh? Is is there a way that the um, board of commissioners notifies people who are continuing? Or I, I, this happened two years ago for me, and again, I mean. I put in the application. I have not heard word yeah. one. And I think we might, if everybody has had a similar experience, I think we need to speak up and say, this is not the proper way to do it. Yes, If, if they want us to apply, then answer us. Mm -hmm. so, yep, agreed. Uh, and it should get better with... Uh, actual staff people who will be working with the Commission on Aging. Um, I agree. If you didn't hear, you got it. And Taylor sure. has the list. Taylor, anything else you wanted to add? I see your hand up. I do have my hand up. Uh, nope. Everybody who, based off of just the conversation we had, coincides with the list that Ashley sent me. Um, she also has access to these recordings. So hopefully, uh, processes will get better just after like especially after what Marie said with um staffing and then I do want to remind that with Jennifer stepping away as well as Brenda she has served for two terms we will be needing a new secretary and vice chair if anybody would want to start considering we'll have that at our February meeting which is February 7th Bruce so is there um Given the group that's going to be meeting, um, our, and we talked about a fairly intense work, um, I, and I know we haven't filled out the whole group, but what are the next steps in terms of actually having, we talked about face-to-face -face meetings and 
some schedule for doing some things sooner rather than later. How do we... To your subcommittee, um, I would recommend one of you take the initiative to email the group and start setting something up. I will do that. Or Elizabeth, if you want to do it, go ahead, Elizabeth. No, you can go right ahead, Mark. <laughs> I'm, I'm backing up. I'm letting you do it. Okay. Will you work with me on it? I will. Thank you. All right, then with that, let's adjourn at 1126. <laughs> Thumbs up. Happy holidays and happy new year to everyone. Yes. Likewise, Bye. everybody. Happy new year. Bye, everybody. Be safe. Yeah. Bye.